How y'all doing? It's another episode of Tree Seeking Trucker. We're getting to our Father's Word in the book of Matthew chapter 11. Let's begin with some prayer. Father God, thank you for this moment to where we can sit down and learn the word that you have given to us to bring us out of the darkness of this world and into the light of your son, Jesus Christ. Father God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. May the Holy Spirit dwell in this Bible study. For I'm just a servant, and he is the expert. He is the one with wisdom and knowledge. And through him are we able to reach new heights and understanding of what's going to happen and what has happened and the greatness of you, Father, and the plan of salvation of Jesus Christ. And this we pray in your son's holy name. Amen. All right, let's get going. Here we go. Chapter 11, verse 1 reads, And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. 2. Now when Jesus had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he went, he sent two of his disciples. So John sent in his two disciples, just like the two witnesses, the 70. So even when it comes to deliverance, you go in twos, deliverance from devils. And uh, this is uh, at the minimum when we go to battle, we go in twos. Sometimes God has used one, but that's a special circumstance where there was no doubt in people's minds that could be attacked because they God had declared he'd be with them and um and they have a special mission verse 3 and said unto him art thou he that should come or do we look for another for Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. 5. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. See, the gospel is free in the sense that you you cannot purchase salvation it is freely given but it's not free in the cost of what christ had to do on the cross it did come at a cost and it was paid in with blood tears and suffering the blind physically and spiritually were healed the lame walk became bold for jesus so lame is another word for also spiritually lame that are they're poor in spirit lepers cleansed physically and the prideful became humbled we know that leprosy also is tied into pride so not only physically were the lepers cleansed but their pride was was uh humbled the deaf here and the spiritual and the physical dead came back to life so in Ezekiel 37, we understand the, the dry bones. So the way I see verse 5 is you got to look at it in the physical healings, which is the literal, and then the spiritual healings, which is in the spiritual realm, that things that we can't quite see with our senses, and we have to be able to see them with the eyes that God has given to us through prayer and through gifts. Right. Sorry, verse six. That's still in that slide. And the and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So again, we remember that. If you deny Christ to your friends, to your family, 
to whosoever will. Then God, then Christ will deny you to God the Father. Now, there were times where people were in mortal danger. And there were times where they picked their battles and, and when they spoke. But they necessarily never denied Christ. They just, when the time was right, they waited on the Holy Spirit. Now, that's somebody, something that somebody's going to have to come to terms with when the time comes. And it's not straight out denying like Peter did in the three times before the cock crowed. And I believe that we should never think ourselves greater than any other man, even when Peter, God loved, Christ loved Peter. And God loves Peter too. And his arrogance thought he would have the strength to, to um, be successful in the trials ahead. But Christ understood that his pride was going to humble him because he was going to find out how truly strong he is. Everything we get, our strength, our um, our our willingness to do things, our our, uh, our uh, perseverance, everything comes from God. Everything. Give him the credit if you want to be successful. Leave nothing to your own will, your own strength, and um, understand that. Verse seven. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaking with the wind? So Jesus, speaking of John the Baptist, said, What did you think you're going to see in the wilderness where John was baptizing? A reed shaking in the wind. As a reed swaying one way, then switch it another direction when the wind changes. No, John was walking the straight and narrow path. So no matter which way way the wind was shaking John was on the mission he was on a mission from God to do the will of the father and to proclaim the the lamb of God and he did that and he did not switch up regardless of what trials and tribulations came in his that's perseverance that's discipline, that's dedication to the cause, and he did it for the kingdom of God. Verse 8. But what went ye out to, for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. So this man, John, did not put himself, even though he was called the greatest of all prophets, he did not put himself in a in a life of luxury. He uh, he humbled himself. He trusted in God that He would provide with His creation, and he li he didn't live a cush life. He wore badger skin and ate honey and locusts. He lived off the land. All right, so he was there was nothing the devil could offer him in. When it comes to uh, living a cush life. Because he, he rejected everything that comes out. He was a tough man. And not most, and, I, and I say that because not most people can do that. As much as, I, as tough as I think I am, I think John had an edge on me. I believe he did. I mean, this guy's a straight survivor in the wilderness. He knew God would protect him. He had all... All um, doubt fleed from his mind. I believe so. I believe this man was like that. And Christ is, is, is telling us what he was about. Verse 9. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, more than a prophet. 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So just like the angels will announce the trump with the trumpets of God when Christ returns to make the kingdom of heaven like the kingdom of earth and bring his kingdom to earth, John was that one who announced them. He was, in a sense, a man who was proclaiming the king 
like the angels will later on in end times prophecy. And um, I believe this would be in, this was in Malachi 3.1. Behold, I will send my messenger. He shall prepare a way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. This is the covenant, the new covenant that would bring from the Messiah. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So I want you to understand that Malachi was the last book before the New Testament. It was the last book in the Old Testament. And declaring by the prophet Malachi of John the Baptist. And him pointing the way and the truth and the light in the wilderness to Jesus. And then before that, the theologians will call this the, la the 400 silent years before the return of Jesus Christ. Now, I also want to point in out that history repeats itself. History repeats itself. And in Amos, the book of Amos... Eight eleven. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will set a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wonder, see to see, in those, the sea is a representation of people, nations, and tongues, and Revelation seventeen fifteen, I believe. So if I was to decipher it with that Bible verse, and they shall wander from nation to nation, and from north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Why is that? Will the Bible come under attack? Will Christianity be outlawed? We could speculate, and, and I have a strong belief that that's a possibility. And we can see the birth pains of it right now. The rejection of God's word is, is there. Big time. Is this the great apostasy? I believe it's the birth pains of it. And I, I believe it's going to fall even farther. But be per, persevere, church, persevere. Because the Lord God has won. And, and smash the head of the serpent. You just have to be willing to stand true to the cause and for the kingdom of God we stand and you will receive a crown of life. Amen. Amen. All right, back to Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding that he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So, as we say in that, that one, people that are born of water or born of women, any, pretty much every human being on this earth, there was none risen greater than John the Baptist. So there's none greater than him because of his of his appointed uh, job that he had to do, his mission, and what a great job he did, and a great example he did as a man of God. But he said, the Lord said, that he is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So that even the least of the people in the greater heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Why is that? Well, we can go to 1 Corinthians 15, 50, and we can get understanding. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. There you go. He was still flesh and blood. So he could not inherit the kingdom of God. So he was not greater than the least in the kingdom of heaven. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Just like there's different flesh in, in the book of Isaiah from the earthly flesh to the heavenly flesh there's different bodies right 
we must the the mortal shall have to put on immortality and get rid of corruption which is our fleshly bodies okay verse 12 back to matthew 11 and from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force so there's going to be an opposition and they're not going to want to give up their power but see the thing is they're holding on to something that was never theirs in the first place why because they don't trust in god they not they're not willing to learn the truth and understand that what god says shall come to pass and we're not out here trying to get positions in heaven we just want people to know the the saving grace of of our lord and savior and the beauty of, of having being blanketed by the holy spirit with a peace beyond under, all understanding that will bring you know, a grown man to tears because it's everything you've looked for in life it's everything you've wanted we still love our families we still love our children but if you truly love them if you truly care about them you'll stick with the lord because you bring a covering over your family as a leader in the household man and if you truly love them you raise them up to know the lord because you will rejoice in heaven with your family for those who choose the lord and there will be an understanding that god undid everything that the evil men wicked men and the devil has done and preserved your love that you had with your family in heaven and what a greater gift is that i think there is none there is no more, more security than you can have in the protection of your family than that. What an awesome time. I could only imagine. And even my my capacity to imagine is limited. And when God says it's going to be an awesome time, then it's going to be mind-blowing. Verse 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. 14 and if ye will receive it this is elijah which has to come he came in the spirit of elijah 15 he that hath ears to hear let him hear so they was beheaded john the baptist so there must be a time when the two prophets come before the vengeance of the of god comes in Isaiah 61 2, it was Give me one second to get there. When Christ came into the temple earlier in the book of Matthew, he wrote he read this Isaiah 61 2 from the scrolls in the temple of God to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So that acceptable year of the Lord was there with Christ and he there had to be a witness to him the king he announced the king coming back but later in that verse it's cut off because and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all that mourn so christ closed the book before he he read and the day of vengeance of our god so this was not elijah this was a witness that could have been Elijah, but they rejected him. But it had to be this way. Otherwise, salvation would not be offered to the nations. All right, back to Matthew. Sixteen. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows. So we understand something from this. That there is a um, there is a factor in people in positions of power within the church, within our governments, 
that are doing things to be pleasing in the sight of men. And that's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it because we're exalting the wrong kings. We're exalting the wrong priests when we should exalt the king of king and lord of lords, the high priest, the son of God. This is who we should be exalting. And only if you accept the truth will you will you acknowledge that. And what does Galatians, I believe, 1.10 say? Let's go there real quick. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Question. For if yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which you have preached of me is not after man. 13. For... I neither received it of man, neither was I taught of it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ, in other words. And that's Paul talking to the Galatians. So that's the question. Who do you aim to please, God or men? Remember Jeremiah 17, 5, God said, Cursed be the man who makes flesh his strength. But, and I'm paraphrasing, but blessed be the man that waits upon the Lord, that puts trust in the Lord, for he shall be planted by the rivers, and drought shall not affect him. And that's a paraphrase, not in exact words. You can go to Jeremiah 17, starting at verse 5. Okay. Back to Matthew eleven seventeen, And saying, we have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented or repented. So, this is an acknowledgement that the priest did not welcome him as the Messiah. The ruling class, the governments will not accept him. As king. 18. For John. Came neither eating. Nor drinking. And they say he had the devil. So it's real easy to point the fingers. And say somebody had the devil. But that's. They had to pretty much say. They had to pretty much say. That. Whatever they could say to discredit the man. A good man. And they pointed the finger and called him that he had the devil. A man after God's heart. That was obedient and disciplined. And subjected his himself a lifetime. Of suffering. Living off the land. But he trusted in God. They didn't say John had a family. They didn't say John had kids. But John welcomed his mission. And like a soldier, he stood firm. Let's jump a little bit. Matthew 23, 5 through 7. Listen to the Pharisees and how they, how they seek to please other men. Again, that's Matthew 23. Five through seven. But all their works they do for seen of men, they make broad the phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. So that means so. The phylactery is an amulet or a little parchment rolls of Hebrew text affixed to the lefer, left upper arm or the forehead of a man mor morning prayer regard as a protection, hence the name against evil spirits. So this is pretty much an amulet. Instead of having the having Hebrew text in their heart, 
if it is pertaining to the word of God, they're they're using it as protection against evil spirits. Now, what do you think is going to happen when Christ has has came and they have rejected Christ? Do you think they're going to be protected from evil spirits? I think not. So, as we continue, Matthew 23, from verse 6, And they loved the uppermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues. They like to be seen by men as important. So they're, they're striving for to be king of the hill, basically. Instead of pleasing to God, they're trying to go up the pyramid or the chain. And they might be confronted with wickedness to get there. Well, we're going to have to um, compromise to get there because this is for the greater good. And this is how the devil corrupts men in power by compromise. This is the greater good. Verse 7. And greeting in the markets and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi, or teacher, teacher. So, how much do they love to be recognized by others? How much do they love to be acknowledged and revered when we're aiming to please God as Christians? See, the world got us thinking that success is upside down. And the world is being ruled by the devil. So we got to understand the devil has a position of power in this world. And he takes us away from the true, the true building of something great and pure, which is for the kingdom of God. And who will be our ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Let's get back to Matthew 11, verse 19. Wait, let me read something real quick before I head to verse 19. Now, we need to understand that this will happen again. And Christ, as we jump ahead, Matthew 24, which Christ tells us what's going to happen in the end times, 37 through 39. And I'll just read this. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. People were blinded by their vanities and they would not. They would not accept the truth. 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the, the coming of the Son of Man be. We'll break that down when we get to Matthew 24. I do have a tape. Um, um, a three part where we compare the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke with uh, what Jesus said. It was more of a comparison than it was actually like breaking it down. But uh, it, it, the video is, um, I foretold you all things. And I think it's a three-part video if I recall right, but you can check that out. But I'm, we're going to go through Matthew 24 as we, as we go along. Verse 19, the son of man come eating and drinking. And they said, behold, a man gluttonous. And a wine bibber. They're telling him that he eats too much, and he's a he's an alcoholic, basically. How blasphemous would it be to t call the son of son of God that? And I'm not laughing because I think it's funny, but I have a ner I, my personality. I, when I get nervous, sometimes I laugh, and it's not really a good thing to have. But it's it's kind of a nervous tick I have as well because I got the fear of the Lord in me. See, Christ, the love of God brought me to him. But as I continue to grow in the Lord, I understood 
that the fear of God, the fear of the Lord keeps me in check. Keeps me humble amongst men, not to think I'm better than even a sinner that hasn't been accepted by Christ. Even though I'm saved and they may not be saved, that doesn't make me greater than them. If anything, I need to bring them to the Lord and not stand over them and point fingers. Continuing in verse 19, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. 20, they began he to unbraid the cities where most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. The unbraiding also when it came to two sticks in the book of Ezekiel, I believe chapter 36, they shall be intertwined into one stick. That means the 10 tribes and Judah, the two tri southern tribes, as they were split in the time of Isaiah and they were scattered amongst the nations, they shall come back and they'll be intertwined just like these will be unbraided because they will not be braided into or um, grafted into the, the kingdom of God because they rejected them. 21. Woe unto thee, Storazin. Woe unto thee, Beth Seda. For if the mighty works which were done in you has been done in Tyre and Sidon and Saddam or um, Sodom, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So they're saying they're even worse than the time of uh, Tyrus, which is Ezekiel 26 and 27, and partially t some of 28, which acknowledges the king of Tyrus or the flat rock was Satan. He is behind the scenes as a principality in these wicked nations. And they were saying that they, Tyrus and Sodom, we all know about Sodom and Gomorrah, would have repented. 22. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyrus and Sodom of the day of judgment than for you. And we remember the judgment that came upon them. But also remember that was a micro judgment compared to what's coming. And that was for Sodom and Gomorrah was hailstorm and sulfur balls coming from heaven and taking them out and they're finding that in our in the archaeological digs they're finding that in the ground you can check that out online 23 and and though Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven shall be brought down to hell for if the mighty works would have been done in the had been done in sodom it would have remained unto this day. So, so these things that are, are unrighteous in the eyes of God, they aim to please men. And I think that's how they got where, they, where they're at, where they're not in the favor of God anymore. Because they've got consumed by being... Uh, pleasing to other men and they've lost their way and the judgment that's going to come down on them is going to be in a worldwide judgment verse 25 at that time jesus answered and said i thank thee o father lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and had revealed them unto babes. So you remember that the ones that were wise and prudent may have not necessarily been the wise and prudent that we have in our own minds. Because we got to understand that God, in the simplicity of the Bible, makes it to where all people can understand it and we got to remember this ties into later chapters of 
the parables and how people couldn't understand them. How it was baffling to people because to them it was like riddles. And when, when God releases prophecy in a time marker, people won't understand it until it happens. It's not going to be like, well, I'm going to get ahead of God and, and I'm going to figure this out. And then when I get, think it's getting close, I'm going to go ahead and straighten up. God knows knows that you're thinking. And exactly what you what the devil wants you to think. And if you don't believe me, go to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel being one of the wisest men on earth that God had um, gifted did not know in the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar who was beyond that head of gold. He did not know who that arms and chest of silver were, which was the prince of or the king of Persia and Cyrus. He would not let him know or divulge the plans of God, but yet there would be a successor that came. Why? Because he want the king of Babylon to make uh, arrangements to defend his his um his kingdom he didn't want the king of babylon to defend it and what would that mean that mean more people would die more people would die and that's you got to understand that's the mercy of god too not to tell you everything there's some mercy in there even for the 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 heathens because without without god they would die and perish without christ which at the time of daniel christ was not here on the earth yet they would perish. So I hope you understand that no matter how much you you are wise and prudent in prophecy, especially when you study prophecy, that until it happens, you're not going to know. It's not going to make any sense to you. But when it happens, and I call them the time markers, and God's will will not be hindered. And say, let's just say for argument's sake. That you, you could figure it out and you're a wicked man and you were making attempts to, to um, counter what God's prophecy is. God will do what he has to do. And again, God is rich in mercy and kindness to where he wouldn't have to take you, even if it came down to taking you out, to, to his prophecy to happen. You're not going to you're not going to hinder God's will. And I'm sure you can understand and look at it in a way that I do, the mercy of God, that you wouldn't be dumb enough to do that. But you know what? I don't ever, and I'll speak for my sake, that I've been pretty dumb in my life. I've been pretty dumb in my life thinking that I, I was greater than anybody and, um, and not needing the Lord. So I'll uh, humble myself and, and and talk about it in context of my own failures. Verse 28. I'm sorry. Go to, back to verse 26. I don't want to skip. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. And he is whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So the Father knows me, and I know my Father. People think they could be right with God and not be right with Jesus. People think they can be right with Jesus and ignore the law of God. It's not going to work. They are, they are the same mind, the same mission, the same love. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Understand that. Verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, that are tired and weary, and I will give you rest. Oh, my God. In, in this world, don't you feel exhausted? Don't you feel tired of the results that we have? And um, and none of it bringing you pleasure. But when you put the Lord first and foremost in your life, everything seems to fall in place. You will, you will have trials and tribulations, but you'll get through them. And you'll wonder, 
this couldn't have been me because my track record doesn't work out this well. You will know the most high God is with you. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're not familiar with that word yoke, a ser an animal of servitude or a beast of burden. Back in the days, they used to put this ring around an ox's neck and it's used to evenly distribute the weight between your right and your left side. And you would be able to labor easier than you would if you had leaning on your own strength. And, and that's the way God sees us. He will not give us more than we can handle. He will evenly distribute the labor to trust in him, to follow him. And he shall never let you down. Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. For according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Five, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Six, to the praise, the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. His beloved are his children that follow him. God loves all, but he has a special place in his heart for his beloved. Christ his church understand that he offers you that a place in his church whosoever will on all people nations and tongues take advantage while the probation is still uh, uh, in effect but when that probation closes whoever is locked in the book of life is in the book of life none more shall be entered in it understand it the the books the, the writings will cl will cease and the books will be open if you're not in there. Well, I pray that you are. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. God bless you. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.